It's easy to take it all for granted because a lot of us have never known it any other way. But just a few years ago, this was a very different institution. A well-regarded local state college that served the public without fanfare, ready to stay the course. Until one gift, a $100 million transformational gift changed everything and set Glassboro State on the path to become Rowan University. And since then, we started one of the top 25 undergraduate engineering programs in the nation, fostered entrepreneurial spirits in our business programs, cultivated ambition, excellence, and broader horizons throughout the curricula, and responded to the national need for 21st century healthcare with innovative health sciences and medical education. In our colleges, schools, centers, and institutes, we're conducting world-class research that's meeting society's needs and solving the problems of business and industry. We're the fourth fastest growing research institution in the nation, a top 100 national public research university dedicated to excellent undergraduate education. We're providing more scholarships, increasing access to college education, and reducing the financial burden of earning a valuable four-year degree. We're nationally ranked and routinely earn national notice for students and faculty doing extraordinary things. We're driving the economy of the region and increasing what New Jersey can do to help its citizens be healthier, more productive, and secure. Transformation is not just the story of Rowan University, it's the promise offered to everyone who walks through our doors. Students find themselves and a foundation for their future. Researchers devote themselves to discovery and understanding. Innovators, scholars, entrepreneurs, everyone with curiosity and commitment to know more and do more, they all transform our world. So when it seems like Rowan University is continually forging new pathways, it's because it's true. We're creating new ways to learn, explore, and build. We're partnering with business and industry, educators and leaders to accomplish more together. We're encouraging people to imagine, equipping them to pursue and achieve. Being transformed is more than Rowan's story. It's the future we share with New Jersey and our region. Here's to decades more discovery, growth, and transformation at Rowan University. Hello, and welcome to all of our prospective students and their families. I'm Dr. Stephanie Farrell, Interim Dean of the Henry M. Rowan College of Engineering, and I want to thank you for attending today's virtual open house. We have an exciting program planned for you today that will include a virtual tour of our facilities, a live presentation by our department heads, demonstrations by our students, and a live question and answer session. If you have questions, Please type them in the comment section and we will answer them toward the end of the program. Rowan Engineering has student-centered, hands-on, project-based programs. Lab-based courses are integrated into most of our curriculum and our unique engineering clinic course sequence. Here, students have the opportunity to work collaboratively with faculty and industry professionals, along with their fellow students, to solve real-world problems. And you'll get to be part of groundbreaking discoveries. Working on these projects often leads to summer internships, presentations at national conferences, and even publishing opportunities. At Rowan, you'll be part of an undergraduate experience that has been recognized nationally. Our outstanding students and faculty have catapulted us to a U.S. News and World Report ranking of number 17 in the nation for undergraduate engineering education. And importantly, our program is one of the most affordable engineering degrees you will find. Both our retention rate and our graduation rate exceed national averages by over 20%. And we routinely place more than 90% of our graduates in jobs in industry or in graduate school. Finally, being a Rowan engineer is not just about being in the classroom or the lab. We have a variety of student clubs and professional organizations which offer students a chance to get involved, build a network, and develop professional skills. This is an exciting time to be at Rowan, one of the nation's fastest growing universities, and to join the ranks of thousands of successful Rowan engineering graduates who are solving the problems of the 21st century. 
Welcome to Rowan Engineering. The Henry M. Rowan College of Engineering is one of 12 colleges and schools that make up Rowan University. Proudly, U.S. News & World Report has ranked our college 17th in the nation in our peer group and has recognized our university as one of the top 100 public universities in the nation. Our program is anchored by the unique and distinctive Engineering Clinic. This signature curriculum structures an eight-semester sequence that ensures our students are exposed to real-world, industry, government agency, and private foundation-sponsored engineering challenges. Our curriculum successfully prepares students for both engineering careers and advanced graduate study. Students work in interdisciplinary teams to meet project goals and deliverables, work directly with faculty, and network with leading industry professionals. In many instances, students are able to secure internships and full-time employment offers through working in engineering clinics. The Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering is a leader in developing solutions for a world that is rapidly changing. From structures to transportation systems, resiliency and environmental protection, our department has extensive expertise. Companies and agencies such as AECOM, American Asphalt, the Army Corps of Engineers, Atlantic City Electric, Gannett Fleming, and the Department of Transportation have sponsored our program and recruited our graduates. Our nationally ranked electrical and computer engineering program is one of few throughout the nation that meet accreditation requirements for both electrical engineering and computer engineering, giving our students a competitive advantage in the workplace. Notable clinic projects from the department are sponsored by Lockheed Martin, NASA, the FAA, and the United States Navy. As we grew in size and enrollment, we doubled the number of our full-time faculty, ensuring that the small class sizes and low student-to-faculty ratio, which has long been a hallmark of our programs, remains intact. At Rowan, you will not simply be one of hundreds of faces in a lecture hall. You will have an opportunity to work directly with faculty in small class settings conducive to student success. Biomedical engineering sits at the nexus of engineering and healthcare. Integrated with Rowan's two medical schools, our program is one of the fastest growing in the nation. Rowan students lead projects funded by NSF, NIH, and major biotechnology companies. Students have a strong record of placement in top graduate schools and careers with Merck, Stryker, Johnson & Johnson, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Medtronic, and others. Our college has recently seen unprecedented levels of growth, including bringing online a full state-of-the-art academic building, Engineering Hall, a full-scale renovation of our original home, Rowan Hall, ensuring all of our academic departments and students are able to benefit from modern, dedicated teaching and research spaces. The college's chemical engineering department has extensive expertise and a learning environment that replicates industry standards. From our multi-story distillation tower to our cold spray labs, Rowan chemical engineers graduate with hands-on experience. Rowan students have been able to work on projects sponsored by ExxonMobil, General Mills, Johnson Mathay, and the EPA, among a range of other agencies and companies. The college supports four major research centers, advanced manufacturing and materials, virtual and augmented reality, sustainable facilities, and transportation. Many institutions often reserve research center collaboration opportunities for graduate students, but at Rowan, undergraduates are welcome contributors to our thriving $50 million research operation. Our experiential engineering education department is home to the innovative engineering entrepreneurship degree and common first and second year engineering courses. The department leads the college's educational research program, ensuring Rowan students have the opportunity to directly benefit from groundbreaking discoveries. Rowan's nationally ranked mechanical engineering program is one of the most academically competitive departments in the state of New Jersey. Our graduates have recently pioneered advances in the aviation industry and in automated vehicle systems among a broad range of other sectors. Along with students in ECE, select students might also be able to join an exclusive four-year co-op program with Lockheed Martin. The college is also one of the largest tenants of the South Jersey Tech Park of Rowan University. Located just one mile from the Glassboro campus, this center houses several research centers and labs and offers opportunities for private sector businesses, small startup companies, and university faculty and students to collaborate and innovate. The diverse range of student-run extracurricular activities also affords students with opportunities to apply what they've learned in the classroom, 
form relationship with their peers and students from across the college and university, all while tackling exciting challenges and service opportunities. This is the Henry M. Rowan College of Engineering at Rowan University. Hello everyone, I am Professor Melanie Amadoro. I'm gonna take my mask off so I can talk to you all a little bit easier. I am one of the professors, I'm one of the lecturers in the Mechanical Engineering Department, and I'm also the Undergrad Program Coordinator. So today I'm gonna do some uh, slides, go through some slides for you uh, on Mechanical Engineering. Our uh, department head, Dr. Ratan Jha, is not able to be with us today, so I'm gonna go through this. and. Um, hopefully take your questions then a little bit later, so start thinking of those as we're going through. So uh, Henry Rowan um, provided us with the opportunity to create our engineering department here. And you know, one of his quotes is, what this country needs is not more engineers, but more great engineers. And that's what we strive to do in our department. Um, mechanical engineering at Rowan is a very rigorous program, so it's difficult and it's very selective and it's based on a minds-on, hands-on approach. So you will be involved in projects and taking your theoretical concepts that you're learning in the classroom and applying those to your projects. The ASME vision for 2030, and ASME is the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, some of the points that they want um, mechanical engineering to be focused on are listed here. And Rowan Mechanical Engineering's goals are consistent with the goals of ASME. And that includes um, practice-based engineering experience for students, and we have some of our students here today who are gonna show you some of their projects, their clinic projects. Um, and having a balance between faculty research and practice skills in ME, um, greater cultivation of innovation and creativity in the classroom and out of the classroom, um, flexibility in the curriculum, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute, and develop of students' professional skills um, to higher standards, right? We want you to be able to give a presentation, to be able to turn reports in that look really professional and complete to your employer and greater diversity among students and faculty. This is some of the numbers for ME over the last few years. Our undergrad enrollment um, is listed here. So this year we are at about 391. Our full-time faculty is 16, so we have a student-faculty ratio of 24.4. So we have about 400 uh, total students in all four of the uh, class years. Our graduation rate is 85 to 86%. Our retention rate is 88 to 93%. Uh, students who are applying always want to know what is the average um, GPA and, and so forth. So our average um, incoming student uh, SAT for last year was 1340 and the average GPA was 3.85. Um, our graduate placement rate is 97 to 100%. This includes students who are uh, going into full-time employment or going to grad school um, within six months of graduating with their degree. And the average starting salary is about 69,000. This shows our curriculum. So uh, in the fall of 2019, our incoming students went into a new curriculum, which was 120 credits. We had been 128 previously. That was mandated by the state. And what that means is that it's a little bit easier, there's a little bit more flexibility to be able to get your bachelor's in, of science in mechanical engineering. It also gives students a little bit uh, more flexibility in the program. So your fall, your fall semester, okay, okay. Fall semester, um, you have what we call freshman clinic, um, Calc 1, Chem 1. You have a computer uh, programming course where you will learn MATLAB and a CAD program. 
And then you have a row and core elective. That's your non-engineering classes. And then in the spring, it's basically a continuation of most of those classes with freshman clinic two, calc two, you have comp one, um, introductory mechanics, which is physics one, and your first mechanical engineering class, which is introduction to mechanical design. So in that spring semester of your freshman year, um, provided that we are all back on campus, which we all hope to be. Students actually get right into the lab, um, our uh, mechanical engineering labs, and will start learning the equipment, getting their hands on, and doing a project for this class. So what you'll notice that may be different than other programs is that we do have students doing a lot of hands-on projects right from the first year, right from the time that you are freshmen. Um, and then your Sophomore year, junior year, the uh, curriculum is laid out with a lot of flexibility here in the fall of the senior year. So that's been done um, on purpose for students that are thinking about doing a co-op program. So we have just started a co-op program um, and students who are working would need to be working in that semester on the co-op. But because of that, it also gives you a lot of flexibility here to pursue maybe um, a minor in another uh, discipline or some extra courses if you want to get a CUGS, I'll talk about that in a second, um, or an, a concentration in mechanical engineering. So with 120 total credits, it has freed up the students' schedules a little bit to be able to pursue some other um, interests if they, if they choose to do so. So the row and core, which I mentioned, is basically your non-engineering courses. So these are your uh, art requirement, your global requirement, um, and there are some others here as well. Some of these, as you can see, are filled, are going to be fulfilled by the courses that you have to take in the curriculum. And some of them you are going to be choosing. You also have a uh, ethics and a business course that you also have to take. So those are the non-engineering related courses that you need to fulfill to get your degree from Rowan. I had mentioned CUGS. Um, what a CUGS is, is a Certificate of Undergraduate Studies. So for example, if you have an interest in, uh, in aerospace um, engineering or automotive engineering, you may want to do a little bit additional coursework so that you are more attractive to a potential employer um, and show that you've done these courses that are focused on that area of study. So currently we have a COGS Certificate of Undergraduate Studies in Aerospace Engineering and we have one in Advanced Manufacturing. We also have a concentration in Automotive Engineering. And as I said, that just allows you to get more hands-on in a specific area that you are interested in. We have some additional COGS that are going to be brought online within the next year to two years, including mechatronics, um, soft robotics, um, and also advanced materials. So some other areas that are very uh, up and coming in industry and would be very attractive for a potential employer to see that you have pursued while you're in your undergrad career. As I mentioned, many of our students do minors. So you may want to do a minor in bioengineering. Um, electrical and computer engineering is a very popular one for mechanical engineering students. And also, you know, not listed here is a minor in physics and a minor in math. We have students that, that do those. Um, and, you know, if you have the space in your, in your schedule, do that. And then you have a little extra on your uh, resume. So one of the defining aspects of undergraduate education in engineering at Rowan is that we have clinics. So we have junior, senior clinics, which are projects that the students work on with a faculty member. So it could be a project that uh, the faculty member is being funded for and is doing their research on, or it could be a project that a student has pro uh, proposed and gotten approved um, we have had that happen before, and you will work on that throughout the semester. They will typically be multidisciplinary teams working on this project. So as a mechanical engineer, you may be working with electrical engineers or chemical engineers. That helps build those professional skills that we talked about. 
uh, working as a group and meeting goals, meeting deadlines, and so forth. So you will do that all four of your last semester. So junior year, fall, spring, and senior year, fall, and spring. And currently we have about 150 junior, senior uh, clinics that are running. And this picture that you see here is from our showcase that we hold at the end of the year where everybody presents their work. And it's just a really fun time to kind of celebrate what you've accomplished um, that whole academic year. And these are some of the different projects that students have worked on, including uh, Baja and some of the automotive um, clinics. So contact information, the advisor for all first year students is Maria Perez Colon. Um, this is my email here, um, Melanie Amadoro. And Dr. Bakarania, Smitesh Bakarania, is our contact person for transfer students. Um, and our department head is Dr. Ja. So we are gonna now go to one of our students who is going to talk about his clinic project. This is gonna be Jacob, and he's gonna be talking about an instrumented climbing hold project that he is working on. Hi, so uh, as Professor Amado Amadoro said, uh, I'm Jacob. Uh, the project that we worked on this semester was uh, about instrumented climbing holds. What are those uh, is probably a lot of what you're thinking. So in typical rock gyms, there are holds that go on the wall. Uh, which work really well. However, you can't really gauge the, the force that you put on these holds uh, without, well, measuring them, to be completely honest. And so uh, I, I actually have it right here. So, ooh, ooh, yeah, cool, cool, cool. So there are very small strain gauges that measure the minute deflections in the spokes of this that is sandwiched between the wall and the climbing hold itself. And that allows us to measure the amount of force that one would put on it. And this is actually extremely useful for both injured as well as more technical climbers that want to know how their force is being distributed to hold them, well, both against the wall and uh, as they traverse it. Uh, this is Oh, sorry. Uh, the way that the data is going to be communicated between the holds themselves uh, is with an Arduino. Uh, some of you may be familiar with these sorts of things. Uh, they allow some pretty basic rudimentary coding uh, to go on, and we're using an adapter board, an H7, uh, HV711 which is Wi-Fi enabled to send the data from the holds themselves to a server, and then we, at the end, uh, pick up the data and then show it on a GUI uh, at the end of the day. So you can just see the force and all that jazz. Uh, that's essentially our entire clinic, uh, and we're actually extremely close to finishing, which is extremely exciting. Uh, and so I suppose on to the next one, uh, we have Leah with the Artificial Birth Simulator Clinic. Hi, my name's Leah, as Jake introduced me. I'm a senior mechanical engineering student and my project is the Artificial Birth Simulator. I have been doing this project now for over a year and so what you might be wondering is what an Artificial Birth Simulator is. Um, well, the purpose of this is to test experimental equipment on fetuses because I'm sure most people are not comfortable with having experimental technology tested on their fetuses as they are very delicate and important beings. So what we plan to do is we take data from the online which measures the contractions and the uterine heart rate and what we do is we try to replicate it in here which this is an actual artificial uterus which is originally designed to help teach nurses and doctors how to help give birth, but we have configured it in a way so that we can actually replicate the uterine contractions. And what measures these contractions is actually right here. This is called a tocometer. A tocometer is actually used during birth to measure them, and what we use this for is to get our most accurate readings. So you might be thinking also, what is the rest of the stuff on the electronics? 
well, there has to be a way for us to get those readings to have those readings changed on the TOCO, which we do through air pressure because there's a bag in here which inflates. Um, and that pressure is created from this um, pump, this little air pump here. And to get that change in level of the air pump, we use a mixture of this H-bridge circuit board here and our Arduino, which is properly, uh, commonly used in, the, in just undergraduate engineering. And we use code from the PhysioNet data altogether to help simulate it. And our overall goal is to hopefully have a closed loop, which that means that we would be able to analyze this TOCO readings most accurately into our computer and basically go around the circle so that we can have a full actual artificial birth simulator here. Um, I'm just going to run this real quick just to show you that it works. So I'm not sure whether you could hear that, you could see that well or not, but what happened here is that this is the pressure gauge, and with the air pump moving in, the pressure gauge actually goes increasingly. Um, we don't have the thing that reads the TOCO at the moment, but if we had that, you would see that number increase. Um, so yeah, that's my project. Um, I'll swing it over to our wonderful mechanical tech, Carl Dyer. I'm Carl. I'm one of the technologists with the mechanical engineering department. The mechanical engineering department has 1,600 square feet of shop space that we dedicate to our rapid prototyping and industrial equipment. Starting out in your freshman year, we train you on the laser cutter and 3D printers. And as you progress through your academic journey, by sophomore year, you're getting into subtractive methods, learning how to use lathes and mills. And then in your junior and senior years, you work on perfecting your skills and applying them in more complex geometries. We have provided a small tour of our facilities. So you'll see that it's about a two minute video coming up now. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about some of the requirements um, for admission and one of the questions that had come in was what about AP test credits. So at Browin, if you have a four or higher, um, that counts for credits. The registrar's office actually deals with that. So we do have many of our incoming students that have credit already done for Calc 1. Um, or comp one or whatever uh, class that you have taken if you have gotten a four or higher. So you would want to work with the registrar's office to get those credits on your transcript as you are um, coming into Rowan. The program is very rigorous and it's very competitive. Um, as I had on the slide earlier, our GPA for incoming students last year was 3.85 with an average SAT of 1340. This year, of course, the SAT is optional, so it will be more of a holistic approach in looking at your application. So that would include um, your grades. Uh, Rowan does not do a weighted GPA anymore, um, but more emphasis would be placed on looking at your math and science grades, right, which would make sense, I, I think. Um, as well as looking at your essay and uh, your letters of recommendation. So always want to emphasize getting letters of recommendation from your math or your science teachers, computer science, um, or if you've had any engineering classes in high school. Um, so those are some of the things that you want to try to focus on. So it is a very competitive program to get into. 
um, we have really excellent students um, that that get into our program and work really hard you know so it's a tough program but you get through it and I think you feel really great that you made it through at the end of those four years another question has come in does your program uh, offer opportunities to learn programming Arduinos Raspberry Pis and mini computers So you are given the opportunity to learn to program microcontrollers. In your freshman year, you are, you're taught MATLAB, which is a scientific language, but that sets the groundwork for the basics of any programming as long as you're learning the structures. In your intro to mechanical design class, one of the projects is to build a small robotic arm. And the control that we use for that is Arduino-based, which is programmed in C++, and is a popular choice amongst most of our students in um, mechanical engineering program just due to its easiness to implement and rapid prototyping. If you decide that you want to get into more advanced microcontrollers, we have the option to do so in our mechatronics course or through a minor in electrical and computer engineering. Question is, could you please uh, talk more about the four-year uh, clinic and co-op programs with Lockheed Martin? Okay, so there are two separate things. So our clinic, um, what we typically call our clinic, is our junior-senior clinics that students take in their fall and their spring for class credits, so they're getting two credits um, for each of those classes. So you take that four semesters, so your uh, fall and spring of junior and senior year. The co-op program with Lockheed Martin um, is uh, a few years in, and students will be working with Lockheed Martin and getting credit for their senior clinic for that time that they are working with Lockheed Martin. And as I had had on the curriculum slide, that they're also working that fall of their senior year. So those classes that they still have to take the fall of their senior year are typically offered at night or online um, to make it convenient for those students to be able to at least one section of those courses so that those students can take um, those classes as well. So it provides about a six month working um, time and many of those students are then asked to you know come back for full-time employment after they are uh, done their degree requirements. Another question we just received was how many people typically apply to the MECI program? Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure if I know the total number of applications. Um, I'm not sure of that. We are one of the more selective um, departments in the state of New Jersey, and we typically will admit about 100 students a year, correct? Yes, yeah, so we, we receive uh, many more applications than are uh, brought into the program. So typically the class size is about 100 students. I don't know the total number of applications that come in. Um, but those applications go through admissions and go through Dr. Ja, our department head. And again, this year is a little bit different because SATs are optional. So it's more going to be more of a holistic approach. And it is a rolling admissions um, procedure. Are there opportunities for students to double major? Yeah, so we do have students um, who double major. We actually have one I talked to the other day. She has a, another uh, major in music okay so you know mechanical engineering and music so you can do it um, I wouldn't say that it's it's many students but we do have some students that do it more common is to see the major in mechanical engineering and a minor in ECE or physics or math um, to get the math minor is not a lot of additional courses for our uh, mechanical engineering students so many students will do that if they have the space and if they have the interest most of the students that choose to do a double major would choose one engineering major and a second linguistics or humanities major. We have had a couple of students that have pursued psychology, uh, French, German. They were looking to go into more of a uh, sales position where the language degree would help them substantially. So if you have an idea of what you're trying to accomplish or what career you're like to choose when you graduate from college, it's where most of the students have made their double major decisions. Question came in, when must students declare their major? 
so when you do the application process, you have to rank your interests, am I correct? So yeah, so when you're applying, um, you want to put on there what you want to apply for. So I believe it's from the very first um, submission of your application. And you know, we always do suggest that if you are accepted into mechanical, um, and if you are you know, thinking that you're interested in it, that you do accept that and start out as a mechanical engineering major. So it's much more difficult to switch into mechanical engineering later on. Okay, so because it is such a selective, smaller group, if you are accepted into mechanical, and even if you're not totally sure, um, we suggest that you do accept that and start out in mechanical engineering. And then if you decide, you know, after a year, I'm really more interested in electrical and computer engineering or chemical engineering, then it's easier to switch out than to start in another major and switch in. And most engineering departments have taken on the 120 credit uh, graduation requirement from the state. So they have a generally common first year. There may be one department specific class, but with the 120 credits, it is easy enough to make up that one class if you decide that you wanted to shift majors after your first year. Question came in about uh, applying for a minor in the program. Do I have to apply for it? those minor opportunities um, prior to entering the program, or can I do that while I'm enrolled? Um, you can do that when you are already accepted into the program, yes. Minors are usually good to declare or at least decide if you're going to pursue by your sophomore year. Right. That gives you adequate time to navigate the required courses for that minor and make sure that it doesn't conflict with your major requirement uh, required courses. Are there five-year programs to earn multiple degrees? We are starting a four plus one. Uh, that is not active as of yet. I think the start date is going to be next year, but there has been a program that we're putting together. I would have to check with our department head. So if you are interested in that four plus one program, you can reach out to Dr. Ja directly. For students interested um, after their bachelor's degree, are there graduate opportunities available in mechanical engineering? Yes, there's graduate opportunities available both at Rome University, and it's not uncommon for our, our students on, to have a bachelor's degree to pursue graduate programs at other universities as well. We are, uh, our master's program and PhD program has gained substantial ground in recent years. We are always increasing our faculty base and have a diverse number of uh, interest areas. It's also not uncommon for our mechanical engineering students to pursue a graduate degree in another sister, um, like physics or electrical engineering, a sister engineering or science degree. Are there foreign language requirements for mechanical engineering majors? So you don't have to take a foreign language. Um, you do have to fulfill your row and core, um, and part of that row and core is uh, the non. You know, those are your non-engineering classes. So you could take a language to fulfill one of those requirements, but it's not necessary to take one of those. Does the department? Are there advisors for specific departments? So in our department. Um, after your first year, so as a freshman, all freshmen are assigned to Mrs. Perez Colon. So she does all of the engineering freshman or first year um, advising. After your first year, you are assigned to a faculty member. So among the mechanical engineering faculty, all of the students are divided um, and given an academic advisor who is a faculty of mechanical engineering. And then you, you know, touch base with them as you need to. Um, it really depends, you know, if you are following the curriculum semester by semester, you may not really have much to discuss with your advisor, but they are there to answer those questions if, if they arise. If you're looking to come in as a transfer student, we do have one faculty member dedicated to transfers since their situations are generally very unique to each individual. There's a questions about how undergraduate students get involved in research. So, 
uh, you talked some about the clinic, of course, and how students involve themselves there. But can you discuss opportunities for undergraduates, freshmen, sophomore, junior, senior, and how they might be able to get involved in the research mission of the college? Sure. Rowan's very unique in that it has a very small school feel, even though it attracts hundreds of students every year. Um, you get first-hand interactions with your advisors who are also the ones doing the cutting edge research. We don't have TAs that are teaching the classes and have the professors kind of remote. So as a freshman, you're walking into a course and you start to get to know your faculty and what their interests are. If you find a faculty member that your interests coincide with, you start to build a relationship. And that's where some of our students have really taken that opportunity and by their sophomore year, they've proposed a clinic course based off of their interest. We had a young group of students that really liked um, drones and flying apparatus, And they built their own company. They did a sophomore clinic based around a business proposal. And by the time they got to their junior and senior clinics, they were building prototypes for their company. And they actually launched the company as graduates of Rowan University. So that is a entrepreneurial startup. It is very much research based in that the product that they developed wasn't on the market and wasn't being used in that direct application as of yet. Um, other traditional research routes, you have faculty members that you get into their research tracks and they're always looking for students in the summertime as part-time hires. Um, so you can get into their research group very early on and faculty members are very drawn to this, especially as freshman or sophomore. You might not have the skills they're looking for, but they're some, you're somebody that they can foster and you can grow into their lab. And by the time you're a junior and a senior, you're very productive and then they might try to retain you into grad school. So there are a wide variety of ways you can get involved in research. It's really up to you with how you want to foster the connections with your faculty members. Questions come in. Will dual enrollment credits obtained in high school transfer? So that is handled by the registrar's office, but yes, we do have many students who have um, completed courses at one of our uh, institutions that we cooperate with that do come in and transfer quite a number of, of classes. So it's, if it is a really great uh, program if you have that ability through your high school. Uh, well, we have a couple of questions related to outside the classroom activities and extracurriculars, how professional societies are involved on campus. So I think it might be a nice opportunity uh, to hear from Professor Amadora, Mr. Dyer, and then hear the perspective of our students and how they engage in some of those activities as well. Okay, great. Um, yes, yeah, so we do have a number of professional societies here on campus and a number of uh, clubs, engineering related and non-engineering related. Um, we have Women in Engineering, for which I'm the advisor. Um, we have the ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, and many others. So we really do encourage the students to get involved right from your very first semester on campus. The clubs meet on Fridays, uh, Friday afternoons, and there are no engineering classes scheduled at that time. So everyone has that um, time open. So even if you're commuting, um, you're not living on campus, we really encourage you to you know, hang out on a Friday afternoon and start going to some club meetings and getting a feel for that. Um, do you wanna add? Yeah, we're lucky enough to have the uh, President Emeritus, as she just stepped down from her position in the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, and that's Leah. So we're gonna hand it over to her to talk about some of the opportunities that she's had for fostering a network amongst her peers and making industry connections, what sort of events they run for students and some of the initiatives that the clubs have put on for their fellow students. Hi, so as Carl said, I'm Leah. Um, yeah, I just stepped down as president, but I was president for this past year. Um, and in ASME, I like to focus on four things for our students. I like to focus on professional development, on helping students in the classroom, on creating a connection with our teachers, and of course, then also making a community with our own students. And that's what all the club's main focus are to do. So some of the things that we've done is we create networking events. We have something called pumpkin chunking, which is our biggest event of the year. We have attracted thousands of people from all around South Jersey, between the colleges and the high schools. And it's an event where basically people make these giant trebuchets or kind of like catapults, and they fling pumpkins. And it's basically a time for everyone to make great community and have a fun time here at college. 
We also do connect a lot with the professors. Our department is wonderful in that they really listen to us students. When they were making the new curriculum, when they make any changes to minors, they talk to us. They ask us what our opinions are and we actually do influence them. So those are just a few of the things that our club does. Um, and then of course we have our meetings on Friday, which if we were in person, we'd be giving you plenty of free pizza. Uh, but yeah, we help to help you guys academically in community and in the classroom. So one of the um, things that I did want to expound a little bit more about was what Carl had mentioned about uh, getting to know the faculty. So because we do have smaller um, number of students in our incoming class, you have smaller class sizes. So we don't have any large, uh, you know, 200, 300 person lecture halls where you will be taking your classes. So all of our classes are in classrooms that hold a maximum of 40 people. So a typical class has 30 to 35 students per professor. So by nature of that, you'll get to know your professors, they get to know you. You know, I like to tell everyone, I, I know when my students aren't coming to class for a couple classes in a row. So it's just a very different type of feel than a very large university where there's hundreds of students um, that are all in that major together. So it provides a really nice benefit um, in getting to know each other and as faculty, you know, we can see students that are struggling um, and be able to pick up on that, especially when we are face to face in the classroom. Um, just a really nice benefit and it's definitely a, a different feel um, than the larger university programs that are out there. Along with that smaller university feel, you do get to know your professors uh, quite a bit more intimate than you would in a large research-based institution with hundreds of thousands of students. And as part of that, our diversity within the department, a lot of our faculty come from very different cultural backgrounds, and by having access to them, you get to get a little bit more real-world um, experience. And they bring a little bit different perspective than what you would just find if you stayed just local to South Jersey. And it's a nice experience for the students to open their eyes to some global impact, some different countries. And we also have a, I'm very happy to say in the last couple of years, we've seen a very large uptick in some of our minorities and also the women ratios in our engineering program. So I've been with the, the program for 10 plus years and I'm happy to see those proportions changing and becoming a little bit more balanced. A question has come in. Uh, is there specific housing for engineering students? And I think that might give us an opportunity to discuss a little bit about the ELC program. Yeah, so the ELC is the engineering learning community. So if you are asked to be a part of that, um, most students will take advantage of that because they get to live in Holly Point, which is one of the newer dorms, the newest dorm, and has air conditioning. So. Uh, in that engineering learning community, you get some extra support. Um, you live on the dorm floor with other engineers, and it fosters a lot of uh, more community within, within um, your major and other engineering majors, and it's just a really nice way for you to get to know people from the first time that you set foot on campus, as well as getting additional support. Thank you all for joining our virtual open house and we're looking forward to seeing you in the future. Yeah, thank you for Come coming. see us on campus once we are through this pandemic and we're allowed to have visitors again. We look forward to seeing you in the fall. or not see yourself because it's weird just talking into a blank camera but then if the screen was there then I would be looking at the screen, screen. You could it out. I just yeah like and then lens. your eyes are all over there but you do kind of want to I, I don't know it's so it's different it's interesting Thanks, well, thank you guys. all for coming out for your Sunday afternoon <laughs>